welcome everybody today once again to another luncheon um, and uh, I think this is our final luncheon for a little for a little while uh, we'll get you that schedule but um, a lot of great things to talk about today uh, first and foremost and we will get to this later but I did this before and it and it deserves being done again we have a conference champion first place done deal right over here volleyball <laughs> So uh, that's a couple conference championships already this fall, and that's tremendous. We'll talk uh, more volleyball a little bit later on. Um, I was trying to formulate what to say about football. Um, I got to go on that trip. Well, I kind of I didn't go with the team. I was in basketball and then flew up there quick, ran to the game, worked the game, and actually stayed overnight, got about maybe three hours of sleep in Spokane on the worst bed I've ever slept in in my life, which is why I'm standing sideways right now because my back is killing me. Um, got back here and finished up with some basketball, so it was nice to have a little basketball sandwich there with some victories. Um, um, but it was an extremely busy weekend, as you all know. Um, football team finished the year 6-6. Six and six. And while everyone probably wanted a little bit more, and we came so close so many times, uh, I think perspective-wise, uh, we came from a 3-8 and eight season last year. I think we, we, we all saw what we were capable of and how we competed with, with a Pac-12 team and how we competed with uh, Eastern Washington. Probably most of you saw that game. Uh, the third-ranked team in the nation and probably the best quarterback in the nation, Vernon Adams. So um, the team, <laughs> we were formulating it. If we'd had a couple more points in the last two weeks, we'd be eight and four. If we had 12 more points, we'd be nine and three. If we had, and you, you get the idea. Um, but every game we were in till the end with the exception of one game this season. And I think that uh, is also a big step forward. So that's a little perspective to put on the season. Um, and only 15 seniors on the team. So it will be a very experienced team next year. And that's uh, uh, exciting to say. But we will move on and talk uh, with some coaches here today that are in attendance. Uh, first off, um, we're going to talk about women's basketball. The Vikings play three games this week, Corbin on Tuesday night. Um, and then it's the uh, Ivy League weekend with uh, Princeton on Saturday, Columbia on Sunday. That's appropriate because I've often been told that Portland State is considered the Harvard of the West. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, we're going to get that opportunity to prove um, that uh, we are the best team in the Ivy League this weekend. That's exciting to think about. All right, let's talk with our head coach, Sherry Merle. I sure hope we play as smart as Harvard this weekend. A um, couple of tough losses. First of all, thank you uh, for the wonderful meal today, um, Spaghetti Factory. And it'll be my... Uh, one, two, three, fourth mill with Spaghetti Factory because they feed our kids before the game. So um, it's going to be a Spaghetti Factory week, um, but we really appreciate all you do for us. It's, uh, it's a blessing. Um, St. Mary's uh, top 25 voting game team. It was a tough loss against them. I thought we showed some fight. Um, we came back within four, and that was nice, but you got to you got to win the battles, and it's uh, fight's good, and I, it was good to see that part with them, but you have to win the battle. And so um, then we go into Seattle U, who is a, also a very good team. I, it's a, our schedule's not set up to, uh, for wimps. Um, we've got a t pretty tough uh, schedule. So Seattle U, very good team as well. They had a couple of losses, but they were against Pac-12 teams. Um, so they came in and uh, really manhandled us um, in down low. So... You know, our, uh, our team, we talk about, um, today we talked about it, we're doing some mental training and some things um, off, off the court, but um, it, you have to have more of a passion to uh, not lose than uh, to win. Everybody loves winning. It's easy to get on that band, bandwagon and you want to win. It's, it's just a joyous thing. But I think there's fewer people that really fight hard uh, to eliminate losing and to, uh, to hate losing more than you love winning. And so we talked a little bit about that, how uh, our team really needs to do the things uh, to eliminate losing. And those factors are, number one, <clears throat> you have to have more possessions than the other team to eliminate losing. And so you've got to take the ball, care of the ball more than they did, and that's what we didn't do against Seattle U. Um, number two, uh, with that, um, you know, having more possessions, we've got to make sure that we uh, are forcing low percentage shots 
and, uh, and making sure that they have a lowest percentage shooting, and we didn't do that either. So um, they really uh, manhandled us, got the ball inside. They had 50 points of their 80, which 80 is unheard of. We can't win ball games um, shooting, uh, having someone score 80. So um, they just got the ball inside. It was Angela Misa's first game back, so she was quite rusty. Um, but, uh, but we just uh, worked on a lot of things on our post play. Uh, but the number one thing is our, our kids do a really good job in the practice facility and, and, and doing what we're asking them to do, but they're not, um, they're not carrying that over in the game yet. They, uh, they play our style of defense really is a trusting factor defense. You have to have a lot of ball pressure, extreme ball pressure, force baseline, and not allow the ball inside very easy and have a lot of weak side help. And uh, they just haven't done that yet. Uh, we allowed them to make passes in and just uh, didn't have a lot of ball pressure. So um, those two things we worked really hard on the last couple of days. Um, and I think you're going to see some uh, kids wanting to eliminate, eliminate losing tomorrow night. Um, we do have Corbin. Um, and uh, we always talk about uh, it's, it's the jersey that you wear, not the jersey of your opponent. And so it doesn't matter if it's Corbin or St. Mary's, who's a top 25 team. we got to go in there. And we got to play tough basketball and uh, eliminate losing by doing those, those things. So I think tomorrow is going to be a good test for us to see what they're going to do. Um, people who have been playing really well, it was uh, nice to talk to Scott Burns earlier, and, and he noticed uh, Allie Brock. She's just playing wonderful. Um, and uh, I just really love her poise um, and just her leadership. She's doing a great job leading. And then Kate Lands, I thought, just did an excellent job the other night. She, uh, she's uh, getting our team involved and doing a good job defensively. She's the one guard that played the defense that we wanted. Um, so those two are good. We are going to move um, Ani Avanesen uh, back into her normal position. So that's going to help us with the guard play and the defense. Um, she's been playing inside since we've just been decimated with injuries inside. So she's going to start moving out. We should have Michaela Rivard by the uh, time we play Princeton and Columbia. Um, recruiting wise, we just signed two post players, uh, thank God, because uh, we, we can't, uh, we need size. And we signed a couple of big tall kids, one, one kid out of uh, uh, Hermiston, and her name's Shelby Sanders, so an in state player, which we're real excited about. There's a um, YouTube video on, on the website that uh, really show, showcases her uh, performances, and uh, we're looking forward to her. But one thing that we wanted, we're lo losing three seniors, so we wanted to get some. Uh, some experience, so we went out to the junior college ranks, which we normally don't do, and we found a player in Wyoming, but she's from New Zealand. So, um, and boy, she uh, she came on a recruiting trip, and she's like, Coach, I'm coming here. <laughs> this, uh, you know, well, it, it actually reminds her a lot of uh, New Zealand. It was raining that weekend, and so, <laughs> so I'm saying, this is great, but she, uh, she plays in one of, the, one of the top programs in the country, she plays a, a junior college, Gillette Junior College, and uh, is just a fabulous player. Is just um, you know, going to probably, by the uh, midseason, uh, do a double-double. But she's a 6'3", um, and really good footwork. She's going to come in very seasoned. So we're excited about those two signs in the early signing. We should have something up on the website on her um, this week. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, some photos to come in. So... That's it. Um, we're excited about getting back on the winning track. Like Ty, I was really, uh, it was fun to watch his team play. Um, I, coaches, we really like to have blowouts, and I know that Tyler would probably like that too. But, <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, it's winning the battle. It's one point more than the other opponent. And, uh, but, you know, I, I talked about this earlier than when I talked to you. is a tough preseason, but we're looking at growth. And it's about getting in the gym, growing, and get these young ladies uh, making sure they're not taking a step backwards, but they're taking 10 steps forward and making sure we're on course to do that, and that's all we ask for them to do. All right, let's move on and talk about men's basketball. And um, because we are the Harvard of the West, every one of our men's basketball players except one is currently in class. And this is no disrespect uh, to the young man sitting to my left. Uh, Zach is here because uh, Tyler Geving... Uh, recruited him because he knew what a great player he was, what a great young man he was, what a great student he was. Zach was able to come today, and you're going to meet him here in a moment. And uh, just briefly about Zach Gangler, in case you didn't know, he was the 5A State Player of the Year last year um, in, at Silverton High School. And I've only spoken with Zach a few times, but I did relate the fact that I have a great affection for Silverton. Um, I'm from Sandy, Oregon. 
First of all, I have a great affection for the fact that he's an Oregonian. I'm from Sandy, Oregon, and Silverton is like Sandy, only a little bit better. And the reason why is because, because my wife is from Silverton. So <laughs> I'm going to have her watch this video uh, when it gets posted online. Um, but my wife is from Silverton, and I have spent a tremendous amount of time in Silverton over the last 10 years. I'm not kidding. We eat home place pizza all the time. He's had some of that. All right. Um, but it is a great place, and uh, he's already contributed to the program. If you watched the game Friday night, um, he had a couple of big shots in the second half in that comeback and uh, really uh, played very, very well. Um, the other thing I learned about Zach, and I will leave you with this, is he has the same birthday as me. So now I really like this kid. <laughs> and I know you're really going to like this kid, too. So I'm going to introduce to you, he's going to say a few words, Zach Gangler. Um, for any of you who don't know me, my name is Zach Gangler, and I'm from Soberton, Oregon, just outside of uh, Salem. Um, I'm only a freshman, so I'm sure I'm not really a familiar face yet, but hopefully over time I'll you know, become a familiar face to many of you guys. As far as um, my experiences so far, you know, at Portland State, it's been really well. Uh, I've had great success um, both on the floor and in my classrooms and on the court, sorry. Um, but as far as basketball so far, it's been great. We've, you know, won four games, only lost one, and uh, we lost to a really good team. So, you know, it's been, it's been really well to see our team win already, and people are really happy in the locker rooms. You know, everything's going going extremely well as far as that. And then um, off the court, schools, school's been great so well. Um, like you said, we're kind of like a Harvard, so being in the classrooms, you know, extremely hard and got lots of homework to do. But um, as, far as, as far as that, my grade's gone really well, and I'm excited to be here, and I'm hopefully going to go into uh, the business and be either business administrations or business managing, and hopefully I can do something with that afterwards and work somewhere in Portland for uh, you know, a business company and do something that um, I would like to and kind of follow my family history. So I'm really excited to be here. You know, I've only been here a little while, but as a freshman, it's already gone really well. And just wondering if you guys have any questions for me. I think that's something that some people definitely worry about coming into college. My senior year of high school, obviously you're the captain on the team and people look up to you. And then when you come in this summer to the basketball and you look around and everybody's bigger than you and you're going, whoa, what, what just happened? But everybody's been really, really welcoming. I've had no problems at all. Um, there's two of us freshmen, my roommate Kyle, and we've both been, um, you know, open or welcomed with open arms and everybody's been extremely, extremely nice to us and we've had nothing to worry about as far as chemistry. Yeah. Do you live at, <coughs> two things, do you live on campus and if so, where do you live? Mm -hmm. Number two, have you chosen a science before you graduate? <laughs> a science. Same well, Same let's just, <laughs> as far as science, let's just say I'm staying away from chemistry. That's okay. what I hear is everybody says chemistry is the hardest. Uh, <laughs> so I'm I, have, I have a, a course to recommend. Okay, and what is that? Geology. Geology? <laughs> I'll think about it. I'll think about it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and it is rocks, yes. As far as campus, I do live on campus, and I live in the Broadway dorms. What's it like living in the dorm? That I get asked a lot, and that's probably the best experience that you can have so far as a freshman. I'm surrounded by many, many other college athletes all in the program as far as uh, women's basketball, softball, football. Um, soccer, golf, there's, there's tons of them. And it makes it really easy for us because as athletes, we can all relate to each other a lot easier than we can relate to other, other just um, college, like college students. And I think that's one of the best things of putting us next to each other on the floors is the dorms have been great because everybody's tired some nights so we don't hang out. And the other nights when everybody doesn't have practice, you know, Everybody's happy to be around each other, and I've already made great friends that I'm going to know for a long time. So, the dorms are the dorms are great. That's that's funny you say. My mom was was one of my basketball coaches, despite her never playing basketball in her life. She claims that I'm one of the reasons. One, well, one of the reasons I'm well good at basketball is because of her. She coached me probably until I was, you know, in sixth or seventh grade. Just 
just for fun. But no, I've uh, as far as staying posed, I it's just you know it's just mental, and I come from a small community, and a lot of people always looked up to me and looked at me as, hey, look at how he's acting. So, you know, I gotta gotta keep my face, you know, posed just because otherwise it'd give off the impression that I'm not I'm not having a good time or that I'm worried about how the game's going or something like that. And you just gotta remember, basketball's a game, and I'm out there to enjoy it. So, if it's if it's something I'm worrying about, then then I'm obviously not playing it right. I did live in town. I was one of the few. Feels like everybody comes from around. Uh, the, the country area, but if you've ever been to Silverton, kind of have like one main street called Water Street, and uh, lived right down Water Street. If you go all the way down it, um, South Water Street, I lived in a, a home kind of set off the road a little bit with with some yards and some soccer goals in front and stuff, but no no farm animals or anything like that. So. My dad had a hoop, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> had a basketball court. Was trying to play every day in my. It'd be like 12 o'clock at night, and my dad would be like, hey, let's go play basketball. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like 12 o'clock at night. I'm trying to go to bed. So, yeah, I definitely had a hoop. All right. I think you uh, understand why Tyler uh, was so excited to uh, recruit this young man and get him into our program. Obviously, uh, uh, in addition to being from Silverton, uh, pretty bright, pretty bright fellow. And he is uh, 18 years old. When I was 18 years old, I definitely couldn't have stood up here and, and talked in front of this group. So... Uh, um, that's, that's the poise you see on the court right there. Um, but we're going to see great things from Zach the next few years. Um, all right, let's move on. I, I got some good news and bad news. The bad news is Tyler Geving can barely speak. He's got a really sore throat. The good news is Tyler Geving can barely speak. <laughs> so this will be short. Um, so we can all get back to our lives in a few minutes. No, I'm teasing. To sum it up very quickly, if you saw any of the games or if you didn't, uh, the first two games, quite frankly, in the first half of both the games, Portland State didn't play that well. I mean, they were, they were a little off, didn't play that well, fell behind in both games. And in both games showed the resiliency and the poise and the talent to come back and win those games. And that says a lot about a program, especially this early in the season when guys are still kind of getting to know one another. So that's outstanding. And then yesterday, if you happen to see that game, they just played very well from start to finish against a good team. And uh, that is another great sign to see. So, so we, saw, we saw both of those things this weekend. The result was three wins. And uh, just to look ahead, Portland State will play at Boise State on Friday night, a 5 o'clock game. Uh, we will have the volleyball championship going on here. Uh, but you can uh, hear it and see it on the internet, govikes.com. There's also a live video stream coming from Boise State. Uh, so that's their game this week, and then they'll be home December 7th against Portland and December 14th against Idaho. And since he couldn't talk very long, I'm talking too long, but I'm going to turn it over right now to Tyler Geving. Well, uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, Zach Gangler was probably our <clears throat> number one recruit we went after that year. And it's, it's pretty easy to see why we wanted him in the program. He's a tremendous talent. He's a great player. But on top of it, he's a, he's a phenomenal kid. And if we could have 13 Zach Ganglers, it'd make my life a lot easier. Um, you know, one thing we talk about a lot is we have 13 or 11 of our 13 guys are going to be 22 years of age and older during some point during the season so we have good maturity i said a lot of you guys went on mormon missions and he didn't even know it but um so we got a bunch of older guys but the great thing about it is him and kyle benton as 18 year old kids are probably as mature as as some of our 22 year olds so when you can bring in two freshmen and that's always been the knock on portland state we need freshmen we need freshmen we need freshmen well, we got two good freshmen, not only good players, but, but great people. And uh, <clears throat> to get a player like him that was the state player of the year, we're, we're very excited about that. So, and my voice is bad because uh, <clears throat> Thomas didn't want to take a shower today. We wanted to take a bath. We didn't want to put our clothes on. We wanted to go to school just in our underwear. We... Uh, <laughs> We had peanut butter all over our shirt when I dropped them off. So 
it's not from yelling at the kids. It's from yelling at my four-year-old this morning. So it was a rough morning, trust me. But um, good, good weekend for us. Really excited for the kids. Um, that's a true story. I'm not making that up. It was a rough morning today. It was rough. <laughs> but <clears throat> going back to the weekend, you know, the first Friday and Saturday, I think the first half, we were just basically awful. And we didn't have a lot of energy. We uh, didn't play very hard on the defensive end. And we kind of let our offense dictate our, our defense. And it's got to be the other way around. Our defense needs to dictate our offense. And that's kind of what we did in the second half of both games. Uh, we got after it on the defensive end. And then yesterday, I thought our defense was phenomenal for 40 minutes. And that's basically how we won the game was, was on our defense yesterday. So. It's something we're just trying to preach to the kids <clears throat> and continue to do that on the defensive end. And if we can do that, we'll, we'll be in great shape. So I'm going to quit talking. <laughs> Questions? Chubby, yeah. Chubby style or smooth? No, oh, ah. <laughs> oh, it was it was it was chunky. Trust me, it was. We had a tough morning. You have a couple uh, new assistant coaches. Yes. How are they fitting in? What are their roles uh, in all of this? Uh, Jeff Aranaka, the the agent man, he's the head coach, really. I mean, Jeff is Jeff is phenomenal. He is uh, just look at his track record. He went to a Division Two Final Four at Seattle Pacific. He's probably one of the smartest X and O guys I've ever been around. And if you watch it timeouts, he's kind of the guy with the clipboard drawing up stuff and 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 he looks at me i look at him and we got a good working relationship together we worked together about 10 years ago uh with ken bone all three of us were on the same staff so we have a good connection together but he is uh he's he's a mad scientist i call him i mean he's just he thinks the game um the kids love him he's 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 you know, one of my closest friends in coaching and mentor, and we're very fortunate to have him. Very fortunate. So, it's it's been a it's been a good uh, good hire for us in that area. And then Jace, uh, Coach Deshaun Wiggins in junior college, and he had 21 yesterday and 17 the night before. And with about a minute to go, I said, "Hey, Jace, you earned your uh, you earned your salary there. It's a pretty good a pretty good recruit you brought with you." So. Both of them have been uh, just a great addition to our staff, and, and it helps me. I don't know if we should call an ambulance or what we should do, but uh, uh, he didn't sound like that after the game. I talked to him after the game, so uh, I'm feeling pretty sorry for uh, Thomas right now. That poor kid got yelled at this morning, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, let's move on to volleyball. Uh, currently, and I hope I have it right, 20 and 10 on the season, more importantly, they went 17-3 and in the Big Sky Conference and won the regular season, our volleyball program. They host the tournament this weekend. Uh, quarterfinals are Friday at 10 and noon. Idaho State, Northern Colorado in the first one, Northern Arizona, Montana in the second. And then semifinals in the evening, and that's when Portland State will play. Number two seeded North Dakota will play at 5, and then Portland State plays at 7 on uh, Friday night. The championship is Saturday night at 7 p.m., um, very briefly, Portland State Volleyball under Michael Seaman in 2007, 2009, 2010, 2012, 2013, they won the Big Sky Conference Championship. Uh, and in 2008, 2010, and I'm going to predict it, in 2013, they will go to the NCAA Tournament. Here, here. So to tell us all about it, head coach, Michael Seaman. Thank you for coming this afternoon, and thank you again to Old Spaghetti Factory for having us. Um, this has been a, a very, very, out, you know, just a ridiculous season. Um, and certainly we have, um, we've got a lot of experience on our team. Um, this has been by far the toughest conference uh, from top to bottom that I've, that I've been a part of. And it's, um, so it, I think, We've, we've had some great records in the past, and I know we've won it in the past, um, but I can say, I was talking earlier, there's probably two or three teams that could have won it, and I think this year there's probably about five or six that could win it. 
Um, these are the, the six toughest teams that I've seen in the conference um, and since I've been head coach here. So um, it says a lot about the conference that it's improving. Um, our kids in particular, this has been one of the most exciting weekends I've been a part of in my coaching career. We've, um, as you know, when you go into a weekend and we knew that we had somewhat the destiny in our control, uh, if we won out, we knew that we would at least get the tie. Um, and going into that weekend, having uh, Idaho State and Weber State, Weber State being the second worst team in the conference, um, and then Idaho State the following that Saturday, um, is a difficult one, as you know, because you certainly can't go into Weber and overlook them before going to Idaho State and, and then playing there. And uh, I, I think we had a little bit of that, um, a little bit of the shakes there at in Weber. We, we, we lost, we took, they took one set from us. Um, and they played out of their minds, and they're, they're definitely the, the greatest Shekel and Hyde team in the conference. At home, they're very, very good. On the road, they're horrible. <laughs> so um, it's dangerous because, as I mentioned earlier, when we saw them at our place, um, I think they scored 9, 12, and 15 against us. And so you don't want your team going into their gym thinking that that's how it's going to be. And um, in fact, they played much better. It was a much improved team. And again, um, you know, they definitely took advantage of their home crowd. But uh, I was proud of the way we took care of business there. We got the job done um, and then moved on to Idaho State. And uh, I don't know if you guys have been to the Reed Gymnasium there, um, but it is a very small, intimate gym. And it is loud. And uh, they had standing room only. It was, they had one senior, and it was their team captain. She was player of the year last year in their setter. Uh, it was her senior night, and the place was packed. It was electric, and that was, you know, they were basically, that was a nice little setup for them to kind of knock off number one. And uh, they played like it. They played the best I've ever seen that team play. Um, and our kids responded amazingly. And, um, you know, there's, I think there's times in, in, a, in, in, in the coach's career where it almost seems like your team goes on, on autopilot. And um, even what you're about to say, they're, they're finishing their, your sentences for them. And, and that's kind of how it felt that night, is that I had full 100% faith that they were going to get this thing done. Um, and against a very good Idaho State team, uh, ended up going five sets uh, with us winning it in the fifth set, 15 to 12. Um, and it, it also felt like the whole night, whenever we built the lead, that was never a comfortable lead. Like, it's just not enough, and you're just looking at that. So, um, but I, I was very happy we pulled it out. Um, and I couldn't be more proud and to, to say that those kids earned this number one seed. So we're looking forward to the tournament this weekend. Um, we don't know. I think it's bad luck. I don't want to think about who I'd rather play. Uh, I just want to uh, I want to play well on Friday night and, and give ourselves the opportunity to, to win a, a, a tournament bid. So uh, with that being said, any questions? How many seniors? Six. Whoa. Yeah. So in the next two years, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll basically we'll be recruiting 11 kids over the next two years. Wow. We'll graduate six and five. It's not the way I designed it. It's just the way it ended up. And um, we just recently signed three, um, actually all from the Southern California region. So we've, we're very, very happy with the kids we have coming in. But we've, we're gonna, I'm going to be out every weekend recruiting <laughs> this year. So uh, a lot of work ahead of us still. Yeah. It basically, it'll be a whole new program in the next two years. I'd like to let you know, Michael, that you did a really great job when she was here last week. I don't know whether you got that feedback. Yeah, I, I think I, I did. I mean, Mike, yeah, basically, I think she kind of showed me up. <laughs> no, she's a great kid. I mean, I, I, I can't say enough about her. Um, she is, uh, you know, I think probably her, her humility came out in the way she spoke, but that, that, um, that kid's accomplished a lot. If you look at her resume in particular, uh, the last five years, she has... She has made a huge impact on this program, and, and that's a position um, that I haven't necessarily, you know, to, especially this year, that you, you kind of take for granted. And as I think about, you know, training next year and, and, and having freshmen and kind of go through all of the if-thens and the rules, and um, those are all things that we're going to get back onto. And so um, it's an exciting time, but at the same time, we're going we're gonna to miss her for sure because she's a, she's a great kid. Um, and a great volleyball player, and she's done a lot for this program. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We appreciate it.